we will today discussing about the ability of a ClickHouse as a real-time analytic platform and how to build small real-time analytics with your own hands with minimal efforts. Uh, yeah, let's uh, start from introduction. Uh, my name is Andre. Uh, I'm a technical leader at Double Cloud. I'm actually responsible for transfer, which is a basically a glue service between all of our components, but uh, I'm very proficient with all of our component stack, both Kafka and uh, ClickHouse and transfer and all of the components. I do passionate about distributed systems. Distributed systems is very fascinating topic for me, especially. Uh, I like to transfer data, basically. I like to glue uh, and integrate things, uh, uh, spark things together. So it's might be, uh, so I will, I, I think I'm, uh, by doing this, I'm making a uh, world a little bit less complicated world. And I actually do write, writing code and uh, so on, technical person. Uh, so uh, this is me, it was, I, I will present for you a, a small, uh, uh, small uh, presentation and then a demo. Uh, a quick word about the Double Cloud itself. Why we're actually talking here about uh, real-time analytics? Double Cloud is a, a data analytic infrastructure uh, uh, product. We uh, helps other companies to build analytics in one day. Uh, our core competency is in building data analytics uh, products for real time, for real time analytics uh, based on open source technologies. We are pas passionate about open source technologies and we are actually big uh, lovers of ClickHouse and Kafka and uh, Airflow and other open source technologies that may help, you may find helpful in, uh, in, a, in a journey of a big data world, in big data world regarding to real time analytics. I see more people joining, so uh, welcome everyone one more time. Uh, it's me. I, it's uh, uh, today we'll discover the what is a real time analytics for ClickHouse and how to build one for, 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 from from a scratch by yourself. Uh, so uh, a quick words about today uh, webinar. Uh, Plan. Uh, so first of all, I will uh, quickly explain what is a ClickHouse about, how it's related to uh, real-time analytics. Uh, then I will explain how to integrate ClickHouse with real real-world uh, uh, applications. Uh, how to actually ClickHouse fit in a real uh, real-time analytics landscape. And then we will go with a small demo of a ClickHouse and a Kafka because these two uh, things fits perfectly together. And we will build small application from a scratch uh, for real-time analytics. That's basically a plan for today. So uh, what is a real-time streaming? The three main thing about real-time streaming is ability to uh, ins inspect your uh, data, your application data, your uh, business data in uh, near real-time or near real-time. What does it actually mean? It means actually fast enough to uh, have not noticing that it's there is a delay between actual event happens in your system or, or in your business and to a display of those events. Uh, usually by real-time system, people understand the systems that can uh, uh, act with uh, delivery lock or with uh, latency in, uh, measured in a seconds. Uh, and this actually what you expect from real-time analytics. When event happen, you will receive outcome of this event in a matter of a seconds. Uh, where is actually mostly applicable is in application where it's, you need to tra keep track over a lot of heavy uh, events. It's events driven applications, basically. For example, uh, it's IoT, Internet of Things. It's uh, one of the uh, uh, such example of domain where you can uh, use uh, real time events when, you're, when your devices actually send something to the Internet on a very a fast pace and you will then analyze those events uh, and you want to see these events as fast as possible as quick as possible another thing that you actually can uh, uh, very actually can be helpful is a lock driven system where you have some events locked by your backend applications or your business application and then you want to analyze this information so real-time analytics actually helps you to empower the uh 
power of uh, big data technologies without sacrificing the latency. Uh, usually, uh, latency in such system quite low, uh, one, two, five seconds, something that is can be neglected. You just refresh a browser page and you have a, your your uh, your data there. Another uh, interesting aspect where you can use this real-time analytics is by building your own application, your own subset of the same analytical information for your customers. So uh, this is actually a big uh, uh, deal in, in many of our cu customers. We actually have a lot of uh, uh, exemplars where people try to build their own analytics uh, for their own customers and for this need they need to show this information fast and uh, uh, show them uh, on a huge uh, uh, run rate so it's like concurrent uh, queries and uh, ClickHouse here is a perfect database for actually storing such information such uh, analytical data and querying such analytical information such, and, and data so let's uh, go one more time with uh, what is a classical conventional database uh, um, for big data how they work with analytical information uh, you bring the data into analytical database you prepare this data somehow you put it to the analytical database in a bigger batches usually our uh, our size or daily size and then craft some uh, result tables and those result table can be then served as uh, uh, as a final dashboard or then maybe push to the transactional database for real-time uh, queries or uh, to the transactional database showing like subset of this information for actual end users. In this case, you kind of like building the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the data, crafting the data each day for your customers and this actually brings a lot, a lot of delay. The ClickHouse as a side comes to this same problem from the different angle. You don't need to build data, you just throw the data as fast as possible to the ClickHouse itself as a flat big table and then try to analyze it uh, uh, on real in, in real time. So you just run a query and see a result. And talk analytic on a larger data sets here in real time in the ClickHouse is more or less easy. And uh, you can actually go, uh, make, make it beneficial of the compression rates. So ClickHouse is a columnar database. As, as, as a columnar database, they really usually good on the compression side st stuff. So uh, the, and, and, and it's ended up with a much smaller database uh, disk allocation. So this is actually why ClickHouse is really good to the, this kind of a scenario when you need to show the data to your customers and you need to show this in real time with little delay and maybe uh, with a high, fr of high uh, concurrency. But uh, this is actually bring us another question, how to deliver data to the actual end system. And that's uh, why we actually need here Kafka. Uh, a transactional database or uh, analytical database, usually not like when they uh, overloaded with the writes and ClickHouse as a special kind of, uh, of, of a beast here. I will explain it a little bit, little bit later. So Kafka here is a very good uh, companion for the ClickHouse because it's actually bringing you a sort of a buffer before your application so it can accumulate information in real time and under any pressure in terms of uh, concurrency and then push it to the ClickHouse uh, with a more nice uh, uh, delay. And also it's uh, have already a lot of a built-in capabilities to integrate stuff. So it's actually act as a two sides uh, uh, component. It's either act as a buffer before a ClickHouse and also as integration point because it's much easier to integrate with a Kafka rather than to a ClickHouse. So uh, what we will try to build today is a classical application for real-time analytic. You will have a sort of a uh, actor, which is uh, will act as a producer of a data. We will have a Kafka, which will act as a entry point as a gateway to our data, uh, that data landscape. Then we will try to build a delivery mechanism from this Kafka topic to a ClickHouse. And then the ClickHouse would be end goal for us. Uh, we will maybe uh, show this data to your analytics and maybe build a dashboard on top of it. So 
Uh, for the Kafka and ClickHouse information, uh, you need to think about three important stages for delivery uh, data from a Kafka to a ClickHouse. Writing to a Kafka is more or less uh, easy and convenient, but writing con connecting these two blocks is not so easy. First of all, you need to understand the reading stage. You need to think some proto that will read data from a Kafka, pull this data from a Kafka. Then you need this data to, uh, to process, to transform, because usually Kafka is a blind database it's actually not a database it's a queue it's a message bus and this message bus has no information about your columns on your data formats etc so usually you have to do some transformation to extract the column information and flatten maybe a structure or do some mi minimal line level transformation to make it more suitable for the all database columnar database. And then the last stage of your delivery mechanism is the writing stage. You just lend this to a click house. Uh, this is more or less complicated process. There is several uh, approaches how you can do this. I will just explore one of one of them during the, our demo. So uh, I will explain this uh, to you and in, in, in a second, what we will uh, and we will uh, jump to the juicy part of the webinar, the actual creation stuff. Uh, uh, we will use one of the approach how you can integrate Kafka and a, and a ClickHouse. We will use for this our uh, transfer tool. Transfer is like glue component between Kafka and a ClickHouse, which uh, allow you to integrate them basically. Uh, this tool is lived as a separate process, so it's not uh, interfere anywhere in a ClickHouse and a Kafka. So both of these uh, uh, systems uh, remain uh, unaware about this uh, uh, system, and it's actually not uh, overload the ClickHouse and the Kafka itself. So it's kind of offloaded process. And the transfer itself will read data from a Kafka, parse it according to rules that user oh, you will specify. We will specify those rules, and then we'll load this data in a ClickHouse in a bigger batch. So ClickHouse would be happy. So this is more or less simple. Uh, uh, overview what we will try to do today. So uh, let's jump to the juicy part. I will show you my, uh, let's stop a sharing screen of presentation and I will share a screen of my browser window. We will try to build this application right here, right now. So I think you see the my screen. Yes. Uh, so I already prepared the information. Uh, some su some of things uh, up front. I did create two clusters. One is a ClickHouse cluster. One is a Kafka cluster. I did this before before the webinar because it's uh, usually takes couple minutes to create. Usually five to ten minutes. So I have here a ClickHouse cluster. It's a smallest possible cluster. This is basically a one node cluster which can be. Uh, created in a 10 minutes, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, and we also have a OneNote cluster for Kafka. It's uh, not not a big deal. So to make uh, uh, our desired uh, architecture possible, what we need to do? First, we need to do a topic where we can push a data. To create a topic, I will go to the topics uh, page and basically create a topic. You can do this via CLI or utility, but I prefer a web interface because I'm a simple guy. Uh, this topic will be named JSON events. JSON events. Uh, I would say that for now we can keep it simple with one partition, one replication factor, but you can actually adjust this because this information is quite important for highly available data. And if you have like bigger uh, workloads, we currently work with a more or less toy workload, but for example, it's more than so I will Submit a topic and it will create a topic for me. So next thing that we need to do is try to write and read some data from a Kafka. How you can do this? There is a plenty way how to do this. I will do it with a special, uh, uh, with my Visual Studio code. There is a plugin that allow me to write, uh, oh no, you don't see my screen, wait a second. I need to show the whole screen, yeah. I will do this with my Visual Studio code. Uh, so I already connect my Visual Studio code to my demo cluster. So it's, as you can see, it's connected to this cluster. This configuration is uh, just a connection. I took the information from a host here and there is a username and a password. They connected to the, my demo cluster. And I see that currently, Let's refresh it. Yeah, here's my topic. 
and I can, oh no, I can try to write some this, uh, read this data from a topic and write. So I start listening this uh, this topic. There is nothing happening, but let's try to write some one record. I write this record and. Da, 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 da. It's thinking, can it should send the data now? Da, 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 da. What? Uh, let's me it right one more time. This topic is here. Actually, you will should be able to see this topic in also in monitoring. So in monitoring, we should see that there is JSON event topic. Yep, here it is. There is no events in this topic. What the hell? configuration wait a second uh, let's recreate it let's connect to a, to a cluster so here is our host name I will copy it here at port ID is 9091 uh, Still, SSL is enabled. Here's my admin password. And here's my topic is created. Yep. So let's let's produce. Uh, let's produce Kafka message. Yep. Now it should work. Yep. Let's produce a record. Start a re listening. And as you can see, yep, I produced one record. I can read it. This is a random data in a type column and a random uh, value in a value column. So we currently have a topic. In this topic, there is not, not much much happens, but there is some data. So you can see in our monitoring that you actually produce something. Uh, where is that? Topics. Here are the topics. Yeah. We push four bytes of data in a Kafka. So much data. And we have some information on our topic. So let's try to uh, put cluster of a click house still empty. We can verify that because we just, it's just empty cluster. Let's open it in a web browser. Default, nope, nothing, empty database. But we need to somehow co connect them. That's why we will use a transfer here. First of all, to make this possible, oh, it's already created. I will delete this. Uh, preparation. Uh, we need to create the endpoint that will uh, read data from a Kafka. This endpoint is basically uh, information and configuration about Kafka topic. Uh, I will select a Kafka endpoint here, name it somehow uh, JSON event source. Uh, select my Kafka cluster, use default authorization and set up a JSON event uh, topic name. And also we need to specify how I will parse this information because the, the information here is just a bytes. It's just a string. It's not usable unless we parse it and make it visible to our uh, end database. As an inform, I, I do already know how this information structured because I basically wrote this information to a topic. It looks like a JSON object, right? So I will use a JSON parser here. Inside of JSON parsing, parsing, I will specify two columns that I provide in this uh, in this event. First column is a type, which is a string. 
So I specify this is a type column, it's UTF-8 string, and another one would be a value column, right? Yep, value column. Value column is a number column, right? And it would be uh, this one. So this is our uh, JSON uh, object representation or so-called schema. The schema can be provided different way. You can specify it as a JSON schema if you have like a bigger object, or you can specify something more advanced like JSON uh, uh, schema registry because schema registry can hold and uh, evolve these schemas. But for matter of the simplicity of this particular demo, I will keep this as simple as possible. There is a two columns, one of type, which is string column, another one is a value, which is a number column. Uh, Other uh, options, let's select this one. This one will populate the rest column about for the columns that we enable to match according to our schema so we don't lose them. And let's test and see how it looks like uh, and does it work or not. So uh, test mode takes some sec couple seconds uh, to fetch a data and verify that it's parsed. After a couple seconds, we should see the results. So, uh, the result is there. Uh, we see that table JSON events is founded in our in our Kafka topic in uh, Kafka endpoint. We have uh, two columns uh, with the values type and value. We have a rest column which is basically empty, and we have a technical columns for just for. For, for security reasons, if we lose something, we can track the information because this information is basically inherited from a Kafka and we can uh, navigate in, inside of a Kafka message and understand which exact message we try to uh, deliver or miss delivery or deliver it somehow weirdly. So let's submit this information and Voila, we have a JSON uh, event source uh, endpoint. Next, we need to create a target endpoint. The target endpoint is basically where we lend this information. We want to lend this information in a in our click house. Demo click house. Let's select the demo cluster, default authorization, default database. Everything would be a default here. Uh, so not much, much change. Let's just submit it. So we have our endpoints set up. Let's glue them together in a transfer. The transfer is an entity basically, which is connect two endpoints together. We have endpoint of a Kafka topic, endpoint of a ClickHouse database. We connect them, and this will create our delivery mechanism. So we select JSON event source, demo ClickHouse. Let's name it demo transfer. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's. Uh, Verify that it's everything is work here. It also will take a couple seconds. It will show you what exactly we'll try to transfer in this particular transfer. And if everything is fine, it will just show this information. It will take like 10, 15 seconds. Yep, the very same row that we saw on the endpoint will transit in this transfer which is obvious. So let's submit it. And here we are, voila, our transfer is created. Now we need to activate it and see how it goes. Let's activate it, wait a couple seconds. So under the hood, when, when we activate a transfer, it starts transmitting, da transmitting data. Uh, under the hood, it will read data continuously from Kafka topic and uh, group them, batch them, uh, batch them in some smaller batches around one second parse this information via JSON process that we provided and push it to a click house. That's more or less simple pro procedure, but uh, uh, it's 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 uh, exactly what we needed here. Uh, so uh, it's already started, it's already running. We can observe what is happening dur during the run on this status history pay, uh, status history. Um, uh, component, we basically show uh, what happened under the hood, or we can observe it via logs. Inside the logs, there is much information about what happens, like what exactly is uh, happening here, what is the timings of this particular event. So if you need to dive inside, you can do this, but it's not needed. 
But yeah, let's see. We basically starting. It's already running. Let's verify that something is actually landed in a ClickHouse database. So let's go back to a ClickHouse. Here's our ClickHouse cluster. Let's open WebSQL for this ClickHouse cluster. And so our default database, it's no more empty. It contains something. Yep, it contains our JSON events table. So in our JSON events table, we have like our two rows. And these two rows is what we actually saw on previously. Let's try to add some more rows here to understand how how big the delivery between the Kafka here and uh, and the ClickHouse. So I produce 10 more records. Here is our 10 more records produced to the topic with a payment, proactive, future, blah, 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 a lot of stuff going on. And let's see. Okay, one more. And should be come here in a minute. In a moment. So here is our transfers up and running. Let's start reading data and it's contained some information already. Let's get this one. It's uh, push some more information. Let's do more. Yeah, more information going. So if your application constantly running data in a Kafka topic, this data will land it in a ClickHouse. That's small as uh, what is transferred to, but it's not 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 uh, the whole picture of what we try to build here. Uh, once we have a data stable data connectivity between Kafka and a ClickHouse, we can start building some real application on top of this data. So what we can actually do here, we can actually do here some analytical queries to understand what happens uh, with those JSON events. For example, what we can do, we can do some grow by queries or other queries. Let's try to understand uh, how many unique uh, types of things uh, happens inside of a 15 minutes window. So to start, of 15 minutes timestamp. So we have a 14 events in a 15 minutes window and uh, in total, and we have found this thing type. And all of them were unique, which is a cool, but we also can count average of, for example, uh, value. Here's our example value. Let's produce more records. And yep, let's make it not to start of minute. Yep, now we have more information, more useful information. So in each minute we have different amount of events, all of them were unique and uh, averages is variety. So this information is actually happens in real time. Once you push the information to the Kafka, it's automatically landed in the ClickHouse and you can analyze it. And then we can actually do uh, some more advanced things, uh, which is basically building a dashboard. Uh, so let's go to the visualization here. Uh, let's, oh no, I can't. No, it's not my dashboard. Oh no, I can do this actually now. It's already occupied. Let's then skip it. Uh, so uh, let's uh, uh, wrap it up. What we actually built in this small demo. Uh, we have a two databases allocated on double cloud. First is a ClickHouse cluster. And this ClickHouse cluster, we just have one table. Uh, created. This table created automatically by transfer, so we don't create uh, this table by hands. It was inherited from Kafka topic. 
Uh, also, we have a Kafka cluster. In this Kafka cluster, we create one particular topic. This topic is landing our events. And we can connect this, connect this topic to ClickHouse cluster and make this information available in a ClickHouse cluster in a ClickHouse way as a flat table. Uh, so you can actually analyze it with the queries quite fast. Uh, so this is more or less it uh, in terms of a demo. Let me jump back to the presentation. And okay, so let's jump back to the presentation. What we basically built, uh, once you have these three components all together, you have already enough uh, power to build your own application on top of a click house and start doing the customer facing analytics or your uh, in-house analytics on click house based on the information that you have inside of a inside of a click house after after they landing them from the Kafka topic. So this is it. Uh, basically, the main uh, subject is uh, covered. Uh, I would uh, uh, ask you kindly ask you to visit one of our new uh, our webinars is basically a tool about a webinar about how to make a click house even more powerful with the power of a, uh, of a transfer. Transfer is a very powerful tool. It's, can, it's more than just lending data inside of a click house from a Kafka topics. It actually can uh, bring information from a variety of sources to a click house. For example, it's CD, make a CDC replica of Postgres table, flatten table from, from a uh, MongoDB, or connect some API tools inside of the click house. So it, can actually enable you to uh, very same concept of real-time analytics, but not just limited to Kafka uh, sources, but any other sources. So feel free to uh, join this next webinar in uh, in a, in the early of July. And now I'm ready to answer your questions if you have any. And uh, also, uh, I kindly ask you to uh, fill a survey. Uh, it's a small three question survey. Please fill it if if it's if it's not uh, if it's possible for you. And feel free to ask a questions uh, about uh, that that you are actually interesting, and I will I will try to answer them uh, one by one. What about parsing failed messages? Oh, that's actually a very good question. Uh, let me let me share a screen one more time this one and i will show you actually that's a good question uh, so what happens if parsing of messages is failed uh, let's try to uh, to do this so we basically have this uh, json uh, event source endpoint this endpoint specifies that we have a json column with json with a two columns so what case it can basically goes wrong here first we can have more columns second we have we can have uh, columns with different types in it and third we can have something uh, apart for json let's uh, ex uh, ex uh, explore what happens in all of these cases so uh let me write you uh one event which with extra column extra column uh, one two three so I have an extra column. This extra column is not specified in the schema. So if I write this data, uh, this data is basically saved because I uh, specify that I want to add all extra columns as a special rest columns. So if you go to the uh, web SQL and select uh, all elements from JSON events, provide timestamp. So you will see that this extra column typo time uh, so uh, you will see that there is extra column in this rest column. So it's not it's not loose. But you can have other uh, problems. Let's for example have uh, different type of uh, value. In this case, we have a value which is specified as integer. Let's try to put in this value, not an integer, but a string value. I'm not an integer. 
and let's produce a couple records. What happens in this case? Uh, in this case, transfer will un understand that this information is not much a schema, but I can do anything with this. And these uh, messages will land it as a, a separate uh, uh, table. We call this table unparsed. It acts as a, similar as a dead letter Q. If it's not parsed, it go to a separate table. Let's refresh. It should be OK. Uh, Reload connection. So, page. so we will end up pushing this information to a separate uh, table. Uh, this table is JSON. Where it is in property. Sorry. Uh, uh, on first. Not here. Why it's not here? Still creating, right? Okay. Very interesting. Yep. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. It's my mistake. It was configured to null as a value that is missing. So uh, we uh, can actually configure it differently. In this particular case, it's null the value, but you can actually configure it to make it uh, possible to just error it. Uh, another possible scenario here is invalid object. So uh, let's imagine that this is a not, not a JSON, but some other format. Let's imagine this. For example, it's CSV instead of a JSON. So it's uh, something like this. Not an integer. In this case, it's basically not a JSON. It's more like a CSV with a, a comma delimiter. Let's produce a couple of records. All of them are produced. And in this case, we can parse message. We will uh, end up uh, lending them into the JSON unparsed schema. Yep. So we will have the unparsed events. And those events basically, yeah, the planner, blah, 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 one, two, three. And we will have here a reason why we can parse it and the row that we can parse. It. So uh, once we understand that there is a problem in our parsing mechanism, we can actually reparse the information and select insert the original table after some processing. So in this case, I can write the query from unparsed row and uh, uh, understand what is the unparsed row here. There is a CSV, I can reparse it somehow, for example, split it by comma and insert it back to the original table. To, to fix the uh, error, basically. Okay. Okay, next question is about what happens if huge amount of data comes for ingestion. Yeah, the reason uh, auto scaling, the auto scaling is basically set up to, uh, by the, it's not like completely auto scaling, it's main, semi manual auto scaling. We have the uh, some capacity to scale up to the so certain numbers. Uh, when you set up the uh, transfer, you spe specify a limits. Uh, and this limit transfer will, will operate. So if you go to the edit in a runtime section, we will have a number of workers. And this is uh, basically degree of how, how many workers you will have. Uh, and uh, by default, it's just one. Uh, one worker can scale up to 10 megabytes per second. Maybe in some cases more. Uh, and then you can basically add more workers. Each worker will add you 10 megabytes of seconds of the data processed. Uh, you can also have in some cases a dedicated runtime. In, in dedicated runtimes, you will have same approach, but inside of your VPC, 
it's same thing, but in this case, you will be pay for the workers. Uh, but the idea is that the, each worker is also can be scaled inside up to some degree, and then you will increase it. We currently don't have the automatically uh, automatic increase of workers, mostly because it's uh, relatively uh, a, a relatively stable number usually. Uh, but we can we have a plan actually to implement this in, somewhere in the future. Okay. Okay, uh, any more questions here, guys and ladies? I have a Q&A section. Yes, I forgot about this. Side of a click house knowledge. What resource are available for future? Okay, the, uh, the next question about click house knowledge base, and I would actually suggest you read it for, for the knowledge uh, uh for for resource for knowledge base reddit is a very good source of information for this kind of an uh, of, of a stuff for example data engineering subreddit is very good uh when you do some uh, data related stuff and also uh webinars uh from the our partner click house will be very very helpful here as well thanks uh what is the best practice to provide some click house on premise oh there is a lot of practice on uh, for on-premise uh, ClickHouse uh, uh, implementation. The main thing that you need to keep in mind when you're implementing the ClickHouse on-premise is about your backups, about your disks, because ClickHouse is very keen about the, how data is stored. Uh, and uh, what else? Actually, we had a, a nice webinar. What what is actually a pitfalls about on-premise click houses? But what what I can suggest from from my experience, in some cases, you can start with um, uh, something simple. For example, Kubernetes separator for click house, and then uh, gradually in, increase complexity. The only problem with a click house and on-premise on-premise click houses, after some scale it become a full-time job for a couple of people because ClickHouse is a powerful database, but it's uh, uh, attention, uh, it's like attention. Yeah, uh, in the ClickHouse there is a zookeeper which uh, coordinate nodes and coordinate meta information across the nodes. And this zookeeper also uh, requires some maintenance and you need to understand how zookeeper works, uh, what is a possible uh, failures of a zookeeper, etc. Another information important about uh, on-premise uh, ClickHouse when you do this, it's sometimes very tricky to scale it in terms of adding nodes or removing nodes, mostly because of you need to copy all of your data in, in a ClickHouse, from a ClickHouse from one node to another to make this node visible. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Well, then it's it's other small pitfalls, but it's what I uh, came up from the top of my mind. I have a question about transfer plan to this local uh, click house and open to the suitable cases, but if it's so, is there any transfer data from a local click house? Well, the easiest way actually is a click house CLI. Uh, the click house CLI is very like click house utility, click house local is a very powerful tool for doing such things. Uh, usually I actually do the same when I developing stuff about uh, nearby the click house. You have your local click house with the data and then you do select from the local click house pipe insert to the, to the target click house. And this work magically. The only problem is only work magically on your laptop. Uh, it's very hard to run the very same in, uh, <laughs> in, 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 in the sky, in, in the clouds. But on your local machine, it's very easy. You just uh, run the ClickHouse client on a, on your terminal, your favorite terminal, and then via pipe, do select something from your local ClickHouse, pipe, insert to the target ClickHouse. And it's worked charmingly uh, as, as a, it was work extremely good. So, no, pretty fine experimental. Yeah, uh, the next question from Yevgeny is about semi-structured JSON. I would call it not like as a not pretty fine schema, but semi-structured. If you know that it's a JSON, then it's more or less good enough uh, knowledge for you. So the, there is a simple answer for that. It's basically, it's, it's more or less a pattern uh, in data engineering. If you have a semi-structured data, you will mark the known columns and everything else will go to unknown columns altogether. Uh, we call this unknown columns as a rest column. Uh, this column will uh, accumulate all the missed uh, columns from a schema and store it there. And then you can basically flatten later 
like make the view column like projection of this original column to the other column or maybe add this column as a real column later and this will uh, will be do automatically magic of a of a transfer here it's like very helpful tool in this particular case uh because if you add a column on a flight uh it will automatically add it to a clickhouse table so you just modify the endpoint you will add new column to the endpoint insert new data with a new column and click house automatically hand, uh, automatically uh, alter the table. Trans will alter the table in the click house and click house will gain a column. I can try to show it, but usually it's like uh, taking five to 10 minutes to, uh, to understand. So let's probably try it. Okay, so if I go to the JSON event, uh, let's add a column. Add a column. Let's be let's be UTF column, yeah. And submit. And if I write some data, okay. Oh, did I name this column? Awesome column with underscore, right? Yes. So if I start writing this data. Uh, transfer should automatically add this column to the table structure. So where is my table? Yep, this one. Uh, it should add it column uh, in a matter of couple seconds. So it's did restart the transfer once I change the settings and I'll schema. No, but let's add more records. So let's select it. Yep, here's my awesome column. Yeah, great. Let's uh, order by timestamp desk. This see the freshest values. Yep, here's my column. So yeah, it will be automatically handled. Uh, uh, usually people do something like this in, in this particular case. They establish more or less known schema. And uh, then due to evolution of a system, they basically pickle a column out of the rest column and put it to the separate column if it's needed. Uh, if it's not needed, they just remove from a schema. So yeah, this is basically how usually people people handle the uh, semi-structured JSON, JSON data. But unfortunately, it's not possible to have a completely dynamic JSON in a ClickHouse. You can do this uh, with just one column called document, for example. But ClickHouse is a columnar database, and it shine when it uh, have a column similar to a shape and size and uh, type. So uh, integer column can be very good compressed and very fast in terms of search, because ClickHouse under the hood will store this information in a column block. And that's why it's very fast in terms of analytic. It's not read all the rows. It's just just like needed columns. And those columns is uh, much easier to read if it's small. So if you have a lot of small columns, it's much easier to click how to process them rather than one big chunky column. OK, any more questions? Let me check one more ch one more time in the chat. I think there is no more question. If there is no more question, I think we can wrap it up. It was a pleasure to present you such an awesome topic as a uh, real time analytics uh, by ClickHouse with, with a click with the power of a ClickHouse. But this particular case is more shiny one because we not just build analytics in the click house we build the whole system this system is ready to scale up to the infinity you just throw a data to kafka kafka will uh, transfer it with a transfer service to a click house seamlessly and all of these systems can be scaled some of them will scale uh, can scale like up to petabytes of scale of data. So this is already a uh, ready to use scenario. To be honest, uh, we also have, I, I would like to small promote our Terraform exemplars. We have the very same uh, things that we just described here as a Terraform exemplar in our GitHub repository. So if you want to set up it uh, for you without clicking browser, I don't like to click in, click in browser too much. 
uh, you can go to our Terraform Exemplars folder and uh, find this particular example. This particular example try to build the very same that we just explained here. Uh, I will post it in the chat. Uh, so you can just, uh, with the power of a Terraform, uh, do the very same. You have a application producer, it push data to Kafka topic. This Kafka topic then deliver it to the click house via transfer. So feel free to use. Uh, and Terraform is a very good tool for building data pipelines reliably. You just describe everything with the Terraform code and commit it to your repository, and uh, you can recreate your infrastructure in a matter of a second. Okay, it was a small side note and uh, some promotion for, <laughs> for our GitHub repository. Uh, uh, despite of that, we I think we can uh, we can wrap it up. Uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, see you.